Hey everybody, it's Chris Eads, Wutini over at GayGamer.net, here with another one of my weekly video podcasts. And it is now Christmas. Christmas has passed, and I now have the presents that I wanted. This is, in fact, one of the presents I didn't know I wanted. Um, I got it at the Geeks Out uh, holiday party um, during the uh, gift swap. Uh, unfortunately, I had the first ticket, so I went first, and I caught a remote-controlled helicopter that was immediately taken away from me by somebody else. And then I opened another present, which was a graphic novel that was took a little while longer, but that also was taken away from me. So I opened up a third present, which turned out to be a, um, a hodgepodge of uh, like movie promotional items, uh, the best one of which was this uh, E.T., hoodie, uh, like in the movie. Oops, sorry, Santa. Um, and, uh, the, the Jack Reacher emblazoned, uh, multi-tool, uh, may come in handy at some point as well. Um, but it was a great party, and I got a cool gift, so yay, holiday fun. Um, but as for the actual presents that I had asked for, um, yes, I got Tearaway. Thank goodness. Um, it had been killing me, I'd been wanting to play it for so long, but I don't, you know, I don't like to buy games for myself right before Christmas, because then what do I put on my Christmas list? So, I, um, got Tearaway on Christmas, and then, uh, on the trip back from Long Island, um, I had like an hour and a half to kill, so, um, I started dozing off, and I didn't want to doze off, because I was like, oh, I'm not going to get to sleep when I get home, so... I decided to kill the time by pulling out my Vita, which I had brought expressly for this purpose, and playing Tearaway. Um, much to my delight, um, when I went to start, when I put the cartridge in, well, it's not really a cartridge, but you know what I mean. When I put it in and uh, started up the game, I was very delighted to see that it said, okay, you're 9% through the game and you're in this area. Click X to continue. And I'm like, oh. So all the progress that I had made in the demo was still there. So I didn't have to go back and replay the demo, which is always the really annoying parts about demos. Except for the demos that aren't exactly part of the game. They're like a variation. Um, but usually the demo is like the first level where it teaches you the controls and everything. And then you've got it when you get the game, you've got to replay that. So this was a very nice surprise, and I appreciated not having to replay um, all the opening stuff. Although, in retrospect, I sort of wish that I had um, been a little more obsessive about searching everywhere and collecting things, because I feel like I must have missed things, and I'm going to have to go back. Because um, I also was like, wait, I didn't get any trophies while doing this. Should I start the game from the beginning so that I can get trophies? And the trophies looked like they weren't level-based, um, they were, like, mission and item based, so I'm like, okay, I think I can, like, still get most of the trophies just by starting where I left off. Um, of course, the problem is that when I came home, my husband and I exchanged our gifts under our tree, and he gave me the other game that I really wanted, which is The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. And, um, now I have two portable games and I'm not really sure how I'm going to balance this. Um, because I'd made such a dent in Tearaway, I spent the next day or two playing a little bit of Zelda on my commute, um, and uh, I'm going to have to try to figure out some way to like maybe play Zelda on the way in, after I play Animal Crossing, and then on the way home I can play Tearaway, and then one of them will get finished before the other, so then I can focus on the other. But... Um, you know, usually I like to have one portable game going and one console game going, um, but that never happens. I always have multiples, and then something falls by the wayside. Um, it will also be very interesting to me to see if I ever pick up Pokemon Y again, because I don't know if I will. Um, but yeah, Tearaway, I've already said, is so fantastic. It's so full of wonderful personality, and it's delightful. Delightful. Um, Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds is also great. Uh, it's 
the classic top-down Zelda. I mean, I played the demo. It's just like the demo. It's really cool. And after playing Pokemon Y, I really appreciate a game on the 3DS that really uses the 3D to decent effect. Um, I have to say I'm not crazy about the art style. Um, it's very cartoonish, and it makes me wish that it was done in the Wind Waker Toon Link style, you know, which they did for some of the DS titles. Um, I just love Toon Link. I think he's just adorable. And so it's a little weird. All the other characters look pretty good, but Link himself, not crazy about his in-game look. Um, but what are you going to do? It has to be a sequel to A Link to the Past, so he needs to look similar to that. Um, then, the other game that I got for Christmas is Tomb Raider. Um, which, you know, I know it's really old, but I never got around to playing it at the time because I forget. It came out at the same time as, like, Bioshock Infinite and a couple other things, and I was just like, wah! It was like, all of a sudden, there were all these games all at once. And, um, I think it might have been the time that Nino Kuni came out, and Nino Kuni trumped everything. Like, I'd been waiting for that. I'm like, I'm playing this. The rest of you can all wait. And then I'll get you when your bargain bin, you know? And I'll get you for 20 bucks, and it'll be much better. Um... I have to say, I was a little wary going into it because I had, I'd seen all the footage of Tomb Raider and it was basically Lara getting shit on over and over and over again and being abused and beaten and bloodied and attacked. And I was like, it just seemed very grim and violent and dark and I didn't appreciate seeing Lara getting shit upon. I mean, I know it's supposed to be the birth of a heroine, but um, I know she'll come out on top and be a stronger person for it, but watching her get abused like this was just brutal. Um, I did play a demo at, like, last year's Comic-Con, and rather enjoyed it, and thought it was pretty good. Um, so I, you know, it just wasn't, like, top of my list, but I did want to play it, and I'm super excited to be playing it now. It's wonderful. I'm really enjoying it. Um, aside from the part in the beginning where she's just constantly getting abused, and, you know, it's kind of hor horrifying. I thought it was really telling that while I was playing, like, the very opening of the game, where she's in the opening cavern with all the candles and the dead bodies and the carvings and the scary stuff, my husband turns and goes, what is this, Walking Dead? And I'm like, no, it's actually not a survival horror scary game. It's uh, Tomb Raider. He was like, what? But, uh, you know, it, it is brutal and violent and dark and gory, but I'm really enjoying it. Um... I appreciate the little, like, RPG elements where you can level up your weapons and your skills, and I, you know, so I can level up the skills that I want, you know, and the weapons that I'm going to use more often, um, and I've, I've, I'm in, I'm, I'm in a part now where I've been having to do, like, direct combat, because I just got the machine gun, so I've been going through all these areas with all these enemies and having to just gun them down with the machine gun. Uh, until I run out of bullets, in which case it's the pistol, but, um, before that, I was really enjoying the bits where you can sneak up behind people, and you see a couple of guys, and thank God that these sol these enemies are just as stupid as in every other game, because you could take one out and the other one doesn't even seem to know what's going on. But there is something so satisfying about taking your bow, aiming really carefully, hitting the guy in the head, and dropping him, and then turning, and getting the guy next to him before he even realizes what's going on. A couple of headshots, they're down, and you can have some fun. Um, I will admit that uh, in the beginning, I did choose easy difficulty, because I normally go with normal. I don't go with hard, because hard is just too hard. I'm not skilled enough for that. But I went with easy because I didn't know if I could switch it in the middle of the game, and, like, on Zombie U, that turned out to be a really, really tough game, and I wished that I'd been playing it on easy and not normal. Um, so here I was like, you know what? Combat isn't why I play a Tomb Raider game, so let me go ahead and make it easy, because I play Tomb Raider to explore and collect all the doodads and treasures and things. So... I'm not about the combat, so the combat is not the focus of this game. So if I can do something to make the combat a little easier so that I can actually explore and finish the game, that'd be swell. Um, so 
yay, Christmas, new games, awesome, and um, I'd like to say that my New Year's resolution is, you know, to finish all the games that I get, but I think I make that New Year's resolution every year. You could go back and look at my podcast from last January and see if I made the same one, because I'm pretty sure I did. Um, it never happens. Um, it'd be swell if I could, but it probably won't happen. Whatever. So, I hope that you got what you wanted, and that you're all enjoying all of your new games. Uh, if you're playing something super awesome, let me know what it is. Uh, so if it's not on my radar, I can put it on my radar. And uh, I hope you all have a happy and healthy new year. And I will see you next time. Bye!